So we had the newest installment to the Hunger Games series with the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I was able to check it out over the weekend, so let's talk about it. So with this movie, it was a little bit different for me where to where I didn't actually read the book before watching the movies as opposed to the other Hunger Games movies where I read all of the books before checking out those movies. So as far as going into this movie, I did not know what exactly was going to happen in this movie. Having not read the book prior to the movie, really the only things I knew about this movie going in was that I knew it was going to be taking place about 60 plus years before the first movie and that we were going to get the main character of Snow and his more younger formative years. So really one of the things I was kind of wanting to see what they were going to be able to do with this movie was how were they going to make us sort of sympathize with Snow, how I see that character of him and how were they going to exactly sort of bridge the gap between this movie and to the other movies to basically how we know his character in the other movies. And I got to say, for the most part throughout the movie, I think they did a good job of actually giving us this character that you kind of feel for, almost sympathize with, and seeing those characteristics in his early years. But also to sort of bridging the gap of how we come to know him in the other Hunger Games movies. I gotta say, the actor playing uh, President Snow, the younger President Snow, Tom Black, did an excellent job with his uh, role in this movie. Along with the other cast, the other cast members were pretty good in this movie. Rachel Zegler was, played a pretty good character. <laughs> Peter Dinklage was uh, pretty good in this movie also, but Viola Davis really stood out in some of the scenes that she was in where she plays this sort of character where she's actually the game maker. And she just seems so kind of unhinged and almost maniacal in a way. Like, it was very interesting and very intriguing seeing her in different scenes that she was in. Another one of the things that I liked while watching this movie was the way it was able to expand upon the world of The Hunger Games. And this whole world of Pan Am itself. Like I was saying before, this movie does take place about 60 plus years before the original movie. And you very much get that feeling of it. You see where the games are, the games themselves are more simplistic, more primitive. It's really such a, just a basic sort of arena where everything's out in the open. But you start to get some of those early signs of how the games we are used to and seen in the other Hunger Games movies to where, you know, tributes are treated well. They're, they are taken great care of right before they enter into the uh, games themselves. But in this movie, you see the early signs of those, but really the way that they were able to ha have the tributes in these games where they just have them on display in like a zoo and everything just seems so primitive to the way we know it in the other movies. But throughout this movie, you're actually getting those early signs of some of the stuff they're able to do with the other movies, like as far as like donations and, and sponsors and different things like that. And we got in the other movies, you definitely see some of the early signs of those in this movie. But talking about more about the arena and the games themselves, I don't know. I, I, watching this while watching this movie, really, it honestly felt like it was a, just a smidge, a little bit more brutal than some of the other movies I've got with the Hunger Games in the, in the arena itself. Like I was saying, this arena is definitely more simplistic where everything is, majority of everything is on the open except for some rubble and things like that. But the use of like the rubble and the use of some of the uh, primitive basic weapons that they have in this arena honestly seems a little bit more brutal, just a smidge a little bit more brutal than some of the other, other Hunger Games that we saw in the movies. Like it actually kind of affects you and you actually feel for some of the actual tributes in this movie when you actually see them die and at the hands of some of the other tributes and just some of the, just some of the stuff that they go through honestly is kind of a little brutal in a way and you actually get some of these scenes throughout the movie that you're actually feeling sort of suspenseful you feel the suspense in a way and you feel the thrillingness like of it now this is the longest movie in the whole entire hunger games franchise series clocking in at about two hours and 40 minutes but I will say while watching the movie, I didn't necessarily feel the runtime of it. Like, I didn't feel a sense of dragginess in there. Honestly, for the most part, the movie flowed pretty well, except for a couple spots. The way this movie is structured is actually split into three parts, and it will actually come up on screen, like part one, part two, part three. I will say that the first two parts are really well done. I enjoyed the first two parts very much. The first two parts is mainly the whole beginning and setup of the games and getting into the games themselves and basically up to the ending of the games. Really enjoyed those first two parts of the movie and the way we get those scenes where I said it was like almost brutal scenes, suspenseful scenes, thrilling scenes, and just this whole basic setup of everything to come. But I will say when it comes to the third part, the third part is the one that was kind of 
it sort of meandered for me in the third part, at least in the sort of first half of the third part, it meanders a little bit for me. It gets a little slow, but I will say it kind of raises the tension a little bit when it comes to like the second half of the part three, and it gets a little bit better. But I will say definitely the, the first, at least the first half of the third part is definitely the slowest part for me. Like I was saying before, one of the things I was kind of wondering what how they were going to execute really was how are they going to make this character of Snow? You know, we know the character from the Hunger Games movies, but how are they going to give us this main character? How are they going to make us sympathize with him or see his different characteristics, make them feel for him? And how are they going to bridge the gap to where those certain characteristics change or somehow are well known in the other Hunger Games movies? How are we going to see those, those basic points on how are they going to do it? And for the most part, I think they were able to capture that with, we actually feel for the character of Snow throughout the majority of the movie. But really, when it comes down to the third part of the movie, that's when we start to get some hints, some characteristics. When it comes to like the third part, you definitely see some kind of the reasons why he is the way he is in the other Hunger Games movies. You get those hints. He kind of bridges the gap on what we're able to see with those other Hunger Games movies, why he is the way he is. I will say, though, it kind of feels a little bit rushed in the end on the way we get his character, how he was throughout the majority of the movie, and then the way he was throughout the rest of the movie. And it kind of felt slightly rushed in the end, but it gets to the point, it comes, it gets the point across on what we we're trying to see. And really, the way this movie ends, it kind of ends on somewhat of a chilly note. Like, you definitely get those hints and those, those different things, different characteristics that you're able to see with the way this movie ends and in the character of Snow and you see those hints, you see why he became the way he became in the way we know him as in the other Hunger Games movies. And it kind of ends on a chilling note the way, the way that this movie just kind of ends and you just know that he's going to become that character. But all in all, I really did actually enjoy this movie. I think it's a solid addition to the whole Hunger Games franchise. I definitely say if you're a fan, a fan of the other Hunger Games movies, then definitely go check this one out. And really after watching this movie, it really got me wanting to have some more movies in the franchise itself with the Hunger Games, like, you know, some more uh, more stories that we could try to have in this whole world of the Hunger Games and Pan Am. Like, honestly, if we could see another prequel of the very first games, how the games were set up and how it all started and all that could be interesting. Or if we get some other stories from some of the other past victors or tributes and stuff from other, other games, that could be interesting to check out. But like I said, it definitely wanted, by the end of the movie, it definitely was having me wanting to check out some other stories set in this world. But honestly, I think this is a solid addition to the whole Hunger Games franchise, and I think it's worth the check out.